Hello and welcome back to my series of retrospectives on the LEGO Star Wars sequel trilogy coverage. In this one, we're going to be looking at structures and destinations. So I've gone through five years worth of sets, all the stuff that I have collected, which is almost all of the sets and things that they've made. And I've pulled out all of the substantive structures, you know, things where you actually put the minifigures on there and they're not intended to be vehicles. We all know that Lego is big on making vehicles, no matter what the theme is. They like to make their vehicles. They do mechs too, but mostly vehicles and not a lot of buildings. So I wanted to look at what they've actually done for this entire series. Three movies. It's effectively its own saga unto itself as far as like making products is concerned. And let's just go through first what I actually have here. I can kind of do it in chronological order. It's funny what the the proportions are, but just starting off, this was actually from the second wave, I believe, of Lego sets. This is just the little evaporator from uh, Jakku. This came out in the Resistance X-Wing set. That's the Poe Dameron's one. That's not called the Poe Dameron's one. It's the gray and blue one, just a little side thing. Uh, this was from uh, Starkiller Base, and they did this as just a separate little thing for the duel between Ray and Kylo Ren. Here we've got, oh, I guess I didn't quite go uh, chronological with that because I did kind of miss this from Jakku also, the little spot where you go and trade with Unkar Plutt to give away some, some scrap and get some magic spirulina tablets that you add water to and they bake themselves into nice little loaves of bread or <laughs> biscuits. That's most of one entire set there. Almost the entire set of this is this, uh, the Takan Takadana, it's Maskinata's castle wall. Just the wall. Still one of the most overpriced sets in modern history, Star Wars or not, we'll come back to that. Uh, this is not really a structure proper, but I think that it counts here. Like it's it's good enough, you know, it's it's a destination. It's part of, of uh, uh, Han Solo's freighter, right? Part of the interior, but it's designed as like something from a building. Like you can imagine this being from the original trilogy. This could be a whole section from Bespin or something. Yeah, I think it, I think it counts for this look. And it's got the two Rathtars in it, Rathtar Escape. Moving on to The Last Jedi, of course, Luke's Octo little hut there, which is pretty much its own thing. We got Palpatine's, I mean, <clears throat> uh, Snoke's uh, throne room here, right? Which is the structure itself is most of what you got there. And I also brought in the Elite Praetorian Guard uh, battle pack side build, because it kind of counts, right? I mean, it's it's bigger than this. And if I'm going to include this, I might as well include this as well. And then from the Battle of Crate, these two came together. They actually will connect to one another like so. Is that the only way? But they went the other way as well. But yeah, so that was, that's what we got for a base for a rebel. I mean, a <laughs> resistance base this time around. And the funniest thing out of all of this, I did not expect this, uh, but it, the story kind of told itself as I started bringing things out to put on the table, the table here. This is all that we got for any sort of substantive structure for the entire third movie for the rise of Skywalker, just a single market stall. And it's not really even a complete market stall from the Pisana, uh, speeder chase set. That's our structure representation for an entire movie right there from Lego. Well, at least they did something before then. Some of these things I like, I have to say right off, right off the bat. Some of these things I think were done pretty darn nicely. I mean, this, I think, I don't remember the price of it offhand, but I, I feel like it felt a little bit expensive to me, but it, in, in hindsight, looking back at it after not having looked at it for a while, I like it. Like this is a, a nice little, little display. Certainly the trees could have been taller, but overall, I think this is a nice thing just to have as a, as a desk model, you know, just a little display, put a couple figures on there and it's good. And there's even play value built in with it. And you got the trees that can be knocked over and the little platforms that can rotate. Like, that's pretty cool. Uh, also, this has stood the test of time. This is a good 
design for a market stall. It doesn't use a ton of pieces, but it's fairly complete. It's accessible with many figures. It makes sense for many figures to come up from this side to come around through here, right? And to be accessed from back here. And then it also has the ability to open up. So doing like that. And that totally makes sense as well. Kind of still keeps this alleyway coming through here, makes this into a larger building. Like this is, this is good design. This is just fundamentally good design that has stood up in, in the, in the years that have passed since it came out. And I still think it's a good thing. And I would like to see more things done like this by Lego. Uh, if I recall correctly, this one also came with the big Lugga beast, which bumped up, bumped up its price but it still wasn't too bad for, for what you got. On the other hand, of course, the Maz Kanata's castle set. A lot of people wanted a Maz Kanata's castle. I'm sure some folks made mocks of it, but we only made mockeries of this set. This was $60 US, came with a handful of figures. I wanna say it was four. I'm gonna cover figures kind of as their own thing in a later video, maybe multiple of them, but this is what we got for structure. And it was so disappointing and it remains disappointing to this day. Uh, you know what? This is actually probably the first time I've, I've looked at it like this. Let me rotate it for you. Got to be careful not to knock these blocks off up here because the whole thing is, just, is designed to kind of fall apart. But let's see if I can get that lined up for you. Something like that. Like, I like that. I like that look and it kind of gives a little tease of what could have been here. You know, just imagine if they had built this out or done more sets to go with this as a, as a series to kind of fill it out and give us more edges, even if they didn't go all the way through, even if they did a little bit of forced perspective where stuff farther back with the center tower structures and stuff got smaller in scale, could have worked out nice. Could have been really cool stuff that a lot of people would have been able to enjoy even outside of the context of Star Wars, because, you know, it's it's based on on Earth archaeological sites, you know, and, and ancient buildings. And it's kind of the inspiration that the Star, Star Wars team took in designing that. But unfortunately, this set was just so overpriced and it still kind of sucks <laughs> to this day. Decent start to a facade, but the rest of it just literally and figuratively falls apart. The one good thing that came out of this I maintain this to this day. One good thing that came out of this was the bacon flag. And I now believe that even though it's been a while, they should come back to this and release a pancake flag. So you can take the bacon and you can put it in the pancake. You can make bacon pancakes. This, I need to, I need to actually go back and start looking at some of my, some of my old reviews or at least go through them quickly before I do these videos. But just casually, just sharing with you how I feel about this today, as, as well as what the rest of these things for the, these retrospectives. I think this is pretty good. I think we need more of this kind of stuff as well. The only thing that's messed up about this, that's really not right about this, is that you can't really put figures underneath. See, that was supposed to be an entire walkway under there, you know, a, a sub, a sub level where you could have a chase under there and you can place figures under there, but they have to be kind of sitting down. Uh, the ability to reconfigure it a little bit with there being three modules here and one of them can be turned 90 degrees. That's good. Like, I like, I like the look of this and it, it's still, it still looks kind of good as a, as a thing to display. You know, this is something you can put on a shelf and then you can put other things in front of it. So the form factor here is, is really nice. And, if this was more valuable as a scene and as a space in Star Wars in general, then I think this would have been much loved by fans to this day. But instead it ended up being kind of a throwaway thing. And I see very little people, very little interest in this and very few people even mentioning its existence anymore. I certainly kind of mostly forgot about it. You know, it doesn't, doesn't matter that much. All right, here's something good from the last Jedi. That is good. That little hut, that is good. And the, 
the value on this set was not bad. You know, it wasn't super overpriced. So that was cool. The build here is simple-ish, but effective. Has some room for some, some play. Good enough design for display, but of course it's open around the back. Would have been much nicer if they could have closed that up, you know, do more structures, build up the entire island, make the whole thing a giant mega UCS set for all of Octo together. <laughs> is it Octo or is it Octo? I think it's Octo. But no matter no matter how you pronounce anything, there'll be folks arguing, arguing about it. But beyond that, they had to leave this open for two reasons. The, the cheap reason, the, uh, the apologist reason, is they needed to have uh, open space to be able to access it, right? You need to be able to get figures in there. Otherwise, that's not usable interior space. The real reason, though, the honest reason, is that closing this up, even if they went a little bit flatter on the back, you know, flattened it, again, kind of a forced perspective sort of thing, reducing the depth on the rear half, still would have added so many more pieces that it would have gone beyond the budget. Never forget, most of the time, the budgets for sets are set before the set is actually designed. So the designers do have these hard limits. There are some cases, from my understanding, where a designer can make a case for the budget to be changed for, for a project that they're working on. It's rare, and they need to have a really, really strong case for it. For something like this, what was it, a $30 set, something like that? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's very rare, if not impossible, to, to have the budget changed there. The throne room was kind of expensive, but desirable. Could have used a lot more red, to be sure, even if just some cloth pieces, some vinyl pieces or something. But looking at this today, looking back at this, I like the shape of this. Thought that was a cobweb. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> it's been a minute. Uh, I like the shape of it. The build is pretty sturdy. Like I'm able to just pick it up and, you know, it's good stuff, has a couple little features built into it. The level of detail is pretty nice. Could have been a little bit larger, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with this to this day. The main thing that was not so great about this was, well, in addition to the price, the fact that it did not include a full team of Praetorian Guards. Of course, this is where the Praetorian Guards ended. You know, they met their demise rather prematurely for as cool as they were. Same thing as with the, the Knights of Ren, but Still, it was a cool scene. It was visually striking. It was good stuff and would have made for really good toys. And they just didn't, did not include all of the, the most important things, the Praetorian Guards themselves in that. Instead, they did the battle pack and that included this little thing. I like the, the training droid, the idea of a platform for, for training purposes, you know, not versus not good guy versus bad guy, but just in this case, bad guy versus bad guy uh, is good. I think it's pretty solid. Got a little weapon platform over there. That's fine. For something that was just a battle pack, I'm okay with it. I mean, what else were you going to give to Praetorian Guards? Force them to have a speeder because LEGO loves to do its, uh, its vehicles or maybe give them a little mech, Praetorian mech. You, they could have made it red. That's fine, but not impressive, obviously. Not impressive as, as a structure, right? Now we start to go downhill really quickly again to this. This was sad. Looking back at it now, this is sad because the set this came in was the crate speeder. You know, it was, it was focused on the crate speeder and those speeders ended up not being particularly valuable to the movie, to the story or anything. Lego could not have known that. You know, they don't know the story in advance. They know very little. They see sketches, they see some concept art, and that's about it. And they have to go from there. Oftentimes the art they see is not even complete, but unfortunately, this is just, you know, there's not much here, but the speeder got a lot of parts and was bigger than it, way bigger than it needed to be. And if they had adjusted the budget to put more into this instead, it would have been much better. It would have been much more enjoyable. I mean, obviously this is 
the sequel trilogy equivalent of a Hoth base defense, right? Was a cool thing back then. I think a fair number of people liked Crate as a destination, but this as a structure from Lego, mm -mm. I mean, this thing, especially this little turret down on the ground. Nah, this is not terrible. Uh, the the shape of it and everything and even the size I would I would go so so far as to say even the size of it because it works with the minifigs you can put minifigs down here and they can be shooting out and you can put at least one minifigure up top would have been nice to be able to put a couple up there but it works I just wish this had been expanded out expand it out a lot more would have gotten more with this and then ironically this tiny little thing this embarrassingly tiny thing that was the only structure that we got at least so far, for uh, the Rise of Skywalker. I always want to say Rise of the Skywalker just feels more natural to me for some reason, but this is actually not bad. Like for what it is, for its size and everything, the, the color is nice, the level of detail is nice, the shape is nice. This is cool, they could do a whole series. But they didn't, of course. So this is what we get. And uh, yeah. It's cool. It works just fine as a, as a side build. In the end, looking back at five years of sets, okay, this is very heavily weighted towards the first movie. And then the second movie got eh, a fair amount of stuff, but could have been more, I mean, especially over here. And this, this, you take this out, okay, and suddenly the picture looks that off to the side. Picture looks. Not that great. So, you know, this really bolsters the, the visual weight of it all for the second movie. But I don't know. I think this is not that bad, all things considered. And when you think about how how rarely Lego does structure stuff compared to, you know, other other themes. Uh, for Star Wars to get this much kind of feels like I should be happy for this, but I would love to see more. Let me know in the comments what you think about this amount of stuff and Lego's general coverage of structure scenes and and structure models in their in their sets in general. We can keep it to talking about Star Wars if you want. Star Wars has plenty of interesting locations. A lot of them are heavy on terrain as opposed to structure. But then I mean, like where is Camino? Where is Camino? Why did we never get like some proper nice big build for one of those you know facilities? Those those ocean platforms. There are so many things that could easily be done that a lot of people would enjoy. Not just adult collectors who want the huge sets that cost hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, and hundreds of dollars, but kids as well. And the idea of being able to add things together, doing things that, that make sense as standalones, but then expanding upon that family and allowing more things, you know, creating more things that can add to that same scene. Lego is starting to experiment with that again, Finally, this upcoming year for for 2021 for the City series, where they've, they've got this concept, this brand new concept that they've just come up with. They must be so proud of themselves. This brand new concept of city building. Whoa. It's the next big thing. City building, the idea of like, hey, buy a little building and a little bit of street. And of course, it's going to come with a vehicle or something. And buy another little building and a little bit of street and a helicopter because it's Lego City. You know, but they could do that easily for Star Wars. They could do that easily for most of their themes. I would like to see that done more. I'm glad that they are doing at least things like the, the various dual scenes, you know, the, 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 the smaller vignettes, stuff like this, but also the slightly bigger ones that they're doing, not for the sequel trilogy now, but just across the, across the, the greater theme of, of Star Wars. And, you know, they are making more, uh, more, destination and structure sets that are a little bit more tuned towards slightly older fans, but still will work great for kids that just want to put the figures on something rather than having to use just their plain desk or their floor or something and just have a bunch of vehicles around and use cardboard boxes or whatever they can, their own pieces to try to make up stuff. But I'd like to see more personally, but this is it. This is what we got for the sequel trilogy. I like this. This is cool, though I personally would love to have the back covered up. This was 
nice for what it is. A little expensive. This is still sad. So sad. So sad. Not very meaningful to the series. Looks cool. Was very expensive. Sad. Cool. Just tiny and fine for, for what it was, right? I think that's about it for this one. So I will wrap up there. Please let me know what your thoughts are and I'll talk to you again soon.